All right, and welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. My name is Raul. This time around, we're going to be looking at the Dofer A188-2 tapped BBD module right here in front of us. We're going to be looking at a basic overview of what all of the dials on this guy are actually going to do for us. Um, and then kind of going over the ports. And then just a little bit of basics, like what exactly a BBD module is, uh, in case you're unfamiliar with that term. Um, so this first segment is going to be all overview and kind of description, uh, and then getting a lay of the land, so to speak. And then in the next segment, we'll actually do some audio demonstrating of some of the capabilities of this module. So to start out with, let's talk about what a BBD uh, is. You got these letters right here. So a BBD stands for Bucket Brigade Delay, and it works similar to, or you know, very uh, familiar like a delay, like an analog delay if you want to think of it that way. And it is analog. It's, it's actually taking an analog signal and it's creating a delay, but it's using a very specific type of circuit called a bucket brigade delay, which is slightly different. And uh, what this does is it creates copies or echoes of the original signal. And uh, they're going to be created at a certain rate determined by the delay clock pulse. And that is going to come from this little dial right here. So at the very top of this dial, you're going to have the fastest setting. And then at the very counterclockwise position, you're going to have the lowest setting or the longest delay. Uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, but right now we're just wanting to understand tapped BBD, uh, or actually BBD, uh, so that we get an idea of what we're getting into here. So BBD is going to create echoes, copies, whatever you want to think of it as. Uh, now the word tapped comes into play here. Um, in general, when you have a BBD module, if there you know, is a BBD that you're kind of interested in out there, uh, it's generally going to be set to one specific type of stages. So either it will have a very high number of stages a very low number of stages. There's all these different numbers going across here, or it might have some numbers in between. Um, so let's talk about what these uh, stages are going to do for us. So at the top, you have a 3328, and then it goes down to 2790, 1726, 1194, 662, and 396. Now in general, uh, if you're trying to create sort of short delay sounds or where it copies the sound in short intervals uh, that creates flanging or chorusing or something also known as carpus strong synthesis, the shorter stages are going to be recommended. So stuff in the 396 range, 662, uh, maybe even a little bit of the 1194. Um, it just depends on personal taste, what you what you want it to sound like. Uh, but the shorter ones, in essence, are the ones that are going to be recommended for those type of sounds. Uh, now, it doesn't have to be exactly these numbers. Uh, there are other types of BBD circuits out there that you can get. Uh, for instance, the A188-1, the little brother of this module, actually comes in other numbers, uh, 128, 256, 512, 1024, and 2048, uh, as well as 4096. Can't forget that one. Um, but in essence, the shorter numbers are going to help you create very short delays, and the big numbers are going to help you create long delays. So if you want like a very long, spacious type echo sound, then you're going to be wanting to lean towards the higher numbers over here on the left. Uh, this module kind of splits the difference for you, in essence, or at least I look at it that way, in that you can actually have access to the low numbers of stages as well as the high numbers of stages. So you could use this a couple of ways. Uh, you could use this as just a single stage BBD module if you wanted to. Uh, you have all of these dials going all the way across, and they all control 
the individual uh, stages as an individual mix. So when my dials are in the center position right there, uh, I have no uh, signal going into any of the stages right there. But if I move one of these, for instance, let's pick the 3328 and I move it in this direction, I have now added my original signal to the 3328 BBD uh, delay, if that made sense. So you have individual control over every set of stages, which is very different for uh, a BBD module. And what this is going to do for you is it's going to let you create short sounds, long sounds, sounds in between, or both at the same time if you want. Uh, so all the way across the dials, that's what you're going to get here. Uh, in addition to that, you may notice that these are very similar to these. Well, that's because they're identical. Uh, both of these are for the same numbers of stages. However, you can actually output two separate mixes of BBD flavors, so to speak. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could output maybe a 3328 to maybe the left speaker of your system and then maybe put... Uh, let's say at 396 out to the right speaker of your system. So tons and tons of different ways that you can use this. Um, you have two separate outputs down here at the bottom. You have output one, output two, and this is going to let you feed these two independent mixes of BBD sounds out to a mixer or an interface or uh, PA system, whatever you want. Now you may notice a couple of jacks immediately above those two. So you, above output one, you have another jack right there. And above output two, you have another jack right there. Uh, these are essentially just malts of the same outputs. So right here, you get the same signal coming out of output one. And right here, you get the same output coming out of output two. So uh, yeah, pretty straightforward uh, in that respect. Now you may have noticed uh, as we were kind of looking at these, that you can put the dial either in the clockwise position, so go that way, or you can go this way. Now, um, if you haven't done a lot of audio stuff, this may seem a little bit odd in that, you know, for audio, and I'm just going to make a general statement here, uh, for the most part, when something is turned all the way in the counterclockwise position, we're used to having it at, you know, a zero level. So, you know, if this was a volume on my stereo or something like that, this would be zero. But as I go all the way to the top, that would be the maximum, right? But in this one, the zero position is actually in the center. And when you move in the clockwise position, you're going in the positive direction. So you're actually adding the positive component of this stage into your original signal. But if you bring it over into the counterclockwise position, you're actually adding the negative component of the BBD signal at that stage to your original signal, if that makes sense. And then that, that's true of all the other dials as well. So you can add the positive component or the negative component of each of these different stages, or you can mix and match um, the stages as you see fit within your two independent mixes. So hopefully you got the idea of that. Uh, I know I may have repeated a little bit there, but just want to make sure that that is strongly in place before we move on. Um, since that kind of covers these dials and how exactly they work, uh, we can move all the way to the end over here. We have our mix uh, amount right there and right there as well. All the way in the clockwise position, we're going to be outputting all BBD signal. And then all the way in the counterclockwise position, we're only going to be outputting uh, original signal from whatever is being fed in the audio in right here. And that, uh, that setting is going to actually be uh, the same for here. So if you move all the way in the clockwise position, you're outputting only BBD signal from output two. And if you go all the way in the counterclockwise position, then you're feeding out only original signal from output two. Okay, pretty straightforward so far. Nothing, nothing too, uh, too outlandish or anything like that. Um, 
I may have mentioned this a little bit briefly, but uh, we talked about kind of how the low numbers are going to help you create uh, very short delays, sort of chorus flange type effects. And then the high numbers are going to help you create kind of long echo, uh, very spacious type, uh, uh, let's see, repeats in your music. Uh, so keep that in mind as we move on to the next setting, which is going to be right here, the delay clock. So in this, as we said briefly in the beginning, at the very top over here at the, the number 10, it's very hard to see, but hopefully you can see that. At the 10 position, the clock is going to be actually going at the fastest, uh, but your delays are also going to be at the shortest. And then at the very far counterclockwise position, the clock is going to be going the slowest and your delays are going to be going the longest. Uh, so it's a little bit of a mind twister, at least I had to kind of get my mind wrapped around that to understand it. Uh, I had to say it a few times just to get it uh, so then I could explain it. Uh, one interesting piece of information that uh, you know I kind of uh, stumbled upon, I guess, while uh, asking Dofer uh, Electronic uh, in Germany about the technical specifications of this module was that the sort of in-spec or uh, recommended setting of this module uh, is actually within a very specific range. So where it can be technically functioning as a delay uh, is actually a uh, fairly designated range within here. Um, and that's actually between 4.5 right there and then all the way to 8, which is about, let's see, that's 10, 9, 8 is about the 3 o'clock position. So between here, the 4.5, and then to about the 8 position, uh, you have what is technically in spec where it's going to function as a delay. Now, that's not to say that uh, you can't use it in this position or you're going to do you know damage to your module in any way um, or you can't use it in this other position if you're operating outside the spec. It's just it's not intended to be used as a delay per se uh, outside of that range. So in essence, what you get is some very interesting audio effects, uh, everything from bit crushing to, you know, very gritty kind of uh, distorted type sounds can be found in those regions. Uh, but it is a fairly good thing to know. Uh, your ear will tell you that when you're listening to the processing happening in this module. Um, so it's not necessarily something uh, that you need to consciously be aware of. Oh, I need to stay at 4.5. Uh, your ear will actually tell you what's happening. And we'll see that when we go into the demonstration a little bit later. But just an interesting piece of information to know that within 4.5 and about 8, you're actually within spec. And then when you go outside of spec, uh, it's no longer functioning as a delay per se. Uh, it's functioning as an effects processing module. Um, there's a very good uh, layout of the detailed number descriptions and where it operates in spec if you need you know the specific numbers for whatever reason in the manual for this found on the Dofer website uh, so if you want a little bit more information about that you can you can check it out um, and get all your que questions answered so um, immediately below the delay clock we have two control voltage inputs right here um, and in CV1, if you plug a voltage in, uh, you have no control over the level uh, unless you're doing you know, something externally. So if you patch in, let's say, a uh, LFO, uh, the LFO, whatever frequency it's set to, is going to modulate the rate of the clock uh, accordingly. Uh, over at CV2, you have something a little bit different. You have the patch point right here. And then you have a little attenuator right here. So you can actually control the amount of signal going into the, uh, the delay clock. This one is actually a little bit different than most CV inputs of Dofer modules. So if we look right here, uh, it may be a little bit hard to see the numbers here, 
But uh, a CV input here on the dope for a VCA, for instance, goes from zero all the way to 10. So at the zero position or the far counterclockwise position, you're not inputting any of the CV signal. But if you go all the way to the 10 position, then you're actually putting in the maximum amount of CV signal that's coming in from CV2. This one's a little bit different. It follows the convention of the dials here. So in the center position, you're actually inputting no CV at CV2. And if you move it over to the right, then you're inputting a positive version of the CV coming in. And if you go over to the left, then you're inputting a negative component of the CV input there. If you use both of these, uh, as is the standard Dofer convention, or let's say you were using both of these, like you had cables patched into both, then what happens is the signals that are coming in are summed and then they're sent to the modulation destination. So just something interesting to know if you didn't know that already, then now you know. Moving right along, we're going to go over to these two ports that have the words clock out and then one kind of pointing down to another one that says clock in. Uh, clock out is going to send the delay clock setting from here out to another uh, module. Uh, you can use this to synchronize the A188-2 to another BBD module if you want to, uh, which then would, you know, kind of explain what clock in is going to be for. So if you had another BBD module and you wanted to synchronize the clock of that module to this module, then you could feed it into the clock in there. So there you go. Um, and what that basically is going to mean is if you have the cable going out from here into the other BBD module, if you adjust this, it's going to adjust the delay clock on the other module and vice versa. If you have the other modules clock out patched into the clock in here, then you can actually control the delay clock of this module with the clock of the other module. So uh, one thing that's uh, very interesting or important to know, I guess, when you are doing that is that it's recommended in the manual to use fairly short cables when doing that because if you use any sort of long patch cables, the cable itself will actually act like a low pass filter. And then what'll happen is that it won't be as effective a uh, let's see, a clock synchronization that you would want. So try and use short cables is basically the idea. All right, so I think we got clock in and clock out knocked out of the way. Let's move on to audio in. Audio in is gonna be just that. This is where you patch audio that you wanna process within this module. Immediately above that, you can control the input level of your signal being fed into the BBD module um, in case you find that maybe it's distorting a little bit whenever you're not adding feedback, maybe your signal's distorting a little, you can kind of control the amount that's coming into the module. This one kind of functions in the standard fashion all the way at the bottom is zero and then all the way at the top is going to be the maximum 10. There you go, to the right of audio in and our input level dials, we have the feedback uh, dial, and then we have external feedback in underneath there. Uh, the feedback dial uh, is going to function similar to some of the other dials in that at zero, you know, no feedback is going into the outputted signal. If you move over into the clockwise direction, you're now adding the positive component of feedback back into the signal. And then when you move it over into the counterclockwise position, you're adding the negative component of feedback back into the original. So there you go with the feedback. Uh, immediately below that, you have the external feedback in. And you may actually notice as well that there's an arrow immediately to the right of that that's kind of pointing up here and it's coming from an output labeled 396. Well that's how the feedback is going to actually function so the 396 tap is actually then being fed into feedback and then it's feeding back all the way back through the rest of the signal. Now if you decide that you don't want to use the 396 
Uh, if you patch something in here, it kind of breaks that connection and then you can feed in whatever you want to to use that feedback in. So like let's say you wanted to maybe feed back in the 3328, then you could do that too. And then I'll put that to your mix for special effect. Um, I haven't actually tried that yet, so maybe a little bit later we'll actually try that and see what it sounds like. Uh, as you can see, or hopefully you can see, immediately below these we have these numbers here. Since I just brought up 396, you have 396, 662, 1194, 1726, 2790, and 3328. So these are the individual taps from each of the stages, which are going to be available to you as individual outputs. So you can actually input the outputs of each stage uh, by themselves, as well as output a final mix as well. So um, you may need a lot of cables for that, a couple of external mixers, but it can actually be done. Uh, you can use it in one fashion by just outputting your basic mixes, or you can use it uh, by outputting just your single outputs, run them to a filter or a mixer or maybe another VCA, uh, whatever type of module you want to run them to, uh, or you can use them in conjunction, as I said. Um, but the basic idea is maximum flexibility within the one module. Okay, so we got all of these discussed. Let's take a look at what's left. Yep, just CV out down at the bottom. Uh, the bottom right CV out, what that actually is going to output is the sum of the clock frequency and also any CVs that are plugged in at CV1 and 2. Uh, one thing to note about that though is that they're going to be summed and then output to here. The main purpose of this CV out is going to be to uh, run to an external filter in case you want to filter out any aliasing or clock noise that arises in the output coming from this module. So there we are. That in a nutshell is the kind of introduction overview of the Dofer A188-2 tapped BBD module. I hope you found this useful and uh, I hope you join us in the upcoming segment or segments uh, where we're going to be demonstrating uh, some of the sound capabilities of this module. Uh, so please join us for that, and thanks for watching.